Hello everyone, thanks for watching today's video and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about gallstones and why some people get gallstones and others don't. It is a very common problem to get. However, many people don't know they have gallstones because in many of them, the gallstones cause no symptoms, no problems. And we call them sleeping gallstones. So they are there, but they're not causing any trouble to the patient and normally don't require any treatment. So to understand why do some people get gallstones and others don't, we need to understand the chemistry of bile, how bile is formed and what does bile contain. So you might remember in my last video, I spoke how bile is formed, how it is stored in our body between meals. So that is our liver, one of the biggest organs in our body. It secretes bile and I'll speak to you in a minute about what bile contains. It's got two tubes coming out of it or the ducts which join into one. On the side of it is a little tube sticking out with a little pear shaped structure, a little sac like structure called the gallbladder. And this is where the focus is, where the gallstones are formed. And this comes down into a tube called the bile duct. It joins the tube of the pancreas from the pancreas called the common bile duct. And this opens into first part of our duodenum. And as I explained in my previous video, the purpose of bile is to help us digest our food, especially the fats. And as I spoke in my previous video, that between meals when there is no food in our intestine, the bile does not, is not required in the, in the intestine. So instead of coming into the intestine, because liver is constantly producing bile, it gets stored in the gallbladder, like a reservoir tank. And when the food comes in, the gallbladder squeezes. So it squeezes like a balloon and it pushes all the bile into our small intestine to help digest the food. I'm sure all of you would have seen bile. Sometime when we vomit, this green stuff comes out of our stomach and that is the bile. So bile is green in color and contains many things. It contains water, it contains phospholipids, it contains cholesterol, it contains a pigment called bilirubin. And the bilirubin is golden yellow in color, which is the main contributor to the color of the bile. Now, as far as gallstones are concerned, we are not interested in anything else in the bile, but the cholesterol and the bilirubin. Bil cholesterol obviously is a fat which comes some of it is produced by the liver, our own liver. Some of it is what we eat. The bilirubin is a pigment, as I explained, which gives the bile its green color. Bilirubin is produced from our blood. So our blood, as we know, is red in color. And the reason it's red, because it causes red blood cells in it. And those red blood cells are red because of a substance in them called hemoglobin. When the red blood cells come to the end of their life and when they die, normal red blood cells last about 120 days, so which is about four months. When they die, they break down. The hemoglobin from inside, which is red in color or gives the red color to the blood, comes out of those dead cells and is broken down in, in the liver into substance called bilirubin. And that bilirubin is the pigment which gives the bile its green color. Normally cholesterol and bilirubin are dissolved in the bile. So bile, even if you let it standing for a few hours or a day or two, nothing will come out of it. It looks like green um, solution, which has got nothing coming out of it. However, sometimes the amount of cholesterol in the bile is very high. Whether we eat very high cholesterol or liver is diseased, producing too much cholesterol, the cholesterol is very high. It's like having too much dirt in the water. And if you leave the water standing with dirt in it, eventually the dirt will settle down and it will form little stones at the bottom of the pot. Same thing happens that when the bile is being stored in the gallbladder between meals, if the cholesterol is very high and the bile is sitting there for some time, the cholesterol, which is too high, will settle down in the bottom of the gallbladder like little crystals. Now, to start off with, these crystals are very, very tiny. You can't see them with the eye. You need a microscope to look at them. However, with time, they grow in size. They grow in size until they form 
stones. On the other hand, if the bilirubin is very high and the cholesterol is normal, then same thing will happen. The bilirubin will crystallize and will start settling down at the bottom of the gallbladder because there is too much bilirubin in the bile and the bile can't hold it in place. And it settles down and after a while they form stones. Commonest stones in the gallbladder are cholesterol stones. However, bilirubin stones are not uncommon either. They are also called pigment stones because they are pigmented. They, are, uh, they have color in them. And what is the difference? Cholesterol stones are cream in color. And they happen in one or two. So most of the cholesterol stones are solitary stones, which means they are single stones. And they can be very, very large. So they start from a very small stone. They can grow, grow, grow. And I have seen cholesterol stone not once, but many times size of a ping pong ball or a table tennis ball. And they can grow even bigger. The bilirubin stones or the bile stones or the pigment stones are much smaller. They can vary from size of a grain, tiny speck of dust to slightly bigger size of a pea but they come in several numbers. So they may be 15, 20, 100, 200. I remember a time I counted 134 stones in a gallbladder. And they, were, they are again quite common. The color of these stones are very different from cholesterol stones. As I said, these are cream. These are very dark green, almost black. So you think they look almost black if you look at them, look a bit shiny. This look like a matte color, so it's not very shiny. These are quite shiny and very dark green or black in color. So why do gallstones happen? So as I discussed a minute ago, the bilirubin comes from the blood, changes into bilirubin from the hemoglobin in the liver. Liver also produces cholesterol and also breaks down our cholesterol that we eat into different types of fats secreted in the bile from the liver as bile pigments or cholesterol which is dissolved stores in the gallbladder and then comes into our small intestine so if there is anything wrong with the blood if the blood is not normal the liver is not functioning normally the gallbladder is not functioning normally there is something wrong with the bile ducts or there is something wrong with the intestine in which the bile is eventually going to that can all contribute to the formation of gallstones. So if the red blood cells which produce the pigment bilirubin, they are breaking down too quickly. Instead of 120 days, they last only a few days and they break down very quickly. So any condition which makes our red blood cells very fragile will produce more bilirubin. And as I said, more bilirubin, more chances of having pigment stones. If there is something wrong with the liver, liver disease or infection of the liver or infection of the bile ducts or infection of the gallbladder or the gallbladder is not contracting properly. So instead of squeezing completely, it squeezes just a little bit and the bile stays in there for a long, long time and eventually the cholesterol and the pigments start coming out, settling at the bottom because the bile cannot empty completely. There is something wrong with the small intestine, like there is disease of the small intestine or the part of the small intestine has been removed surgically. Then all these things can contribute to the formation of gallstones in the gallbladder. So this is a list of the things which I have written down, which are the common causes of gallstone. These are not only causes of gallstone formation. There are many, many more conditions which can cause gallstones. However, these came on the top of my mind, which I think are quite common causes. So starting from blood disorders, sickle cell disease, in which the lifespan of the red blood cells is very small, short, and they break down very quickly and very easily. More bilirubin is formed and hence pigment stones can happen. Same thing happens with leukemia. Liver disease like cirrhosis of the liver or infections of the liver like there is a liver fluke which can happen in certain parts of the world, especially South America and that can give rise to gallstones. 
gallbladder disease and in this gallbladder disease the important thing is sometimes the gallbladder as I explained earlier does not contract normally so instead of contracting completely squeezing all the bile out it only contracts halfway and the bile sits in there for a long time and it stagnates it is at a high risk of infection and also the cholesterol and the pigments settle down at the bottom to cause stones and the, one of the reasons for that happening is too much estrogen which is a female hormone and that is present in hormone replacement therapy that ladies get HRT after menopause or oral contraceptive pills some of them can, can contain high estrogen levels pregnancy in which the estrogen levels go up and all these can contribute to the formation of gallstones in our small intestine and when I talk about intestine it's the small intestine I'm talking about not the large intestine diet obviously can contribute to gallstones if you have very high cholesterol diet or very low fiber diet if we do weight loss quite dramatic weight loss and if we keep doing diets to lose weight again and again and that can predispose to having gallstones Crohn's disease is one of them which can predispose our gallbladder to form gallstones because small intestine is affected surgery in which part of the small intestine especially the terminal part of the small intestine the last couple of feet of the small intestine if that is removed for whatever reason say for Crohn's disease it was removed and then that can predispose to forming gallstones I do hope you found this video informative about why gallstones are formed in the next video I'm going to talk about the symptom that we can get from gallstones how they can affect us what complications we can have and what sort of surgeries are there available to remove gallstones thank you for watching today's video and please remember to like and subscribe